Before we start this podcast, I want to definitely remind you of a sponsor for Fresh of the Word, 20 by 20 Apparel. Founded in 2015, 20 by 20 Apparel brings original tributes to pro wrestling's classic arenas, moments, and events. They look to spotlight the bloopers, bleeps, and body slams, along with the biggest, smallest, strangest, and strongest. In a world of wrestling where there's hundreds of shirts, promotions, flyers, social media accounts, and ads, don't get lost in the sea of parody shirts and display fonts. They can provide professional graphic design services at a reasonable price. 20x20 20 20 also hand screen prints all the tees in-house. So if you'd like to discuss a possible run of tees, posters, koozies, foam fingers, or even Zubaz, then drop them a line at 20x20apparel.com. That's the number 20x, the number 20apparel.com. And also check out their enamel pin line. It's super cool. Fresh is the word. I'm Jim Duggan, got long wood for plenty hoes. I keep it fresher than fresh, but you already know. You suckers bum me, I'm money, I got a ton of flows. My weed loud like a motherfucking thunder roll. Your shit quiet like you ballin' on a budget though. We see your kicks and we laugh and yell at one of those. You see me shining like a suit on puppy. You know my grind and shit is too strong, buddy. That's why the dude call money. I be stuntin' like it's nothing at all. Cause it's nothing to me, it's probably something to y'all. Trying to smoke like me, then come and fuck with your dog. Got a closet full of kids, you can't cop it tomorrow. And I'm fresher than the freshest, you can tell it's in my essence. Bitch, you see the way I'm rapping? Yes, I do this shit to death. I tell I'm running out of breath. I tell somebody cut a check. But either way, you know it's fresh. But either way, you know it's fresh. Fresh. We fresh. 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 God damn it, we fresh. Hey everybody, welcome to the Fresh the Word podcast. I'm your host, Kelly K. Fresh Frazier, and we got a great guest for you. Uh, this is a producer that I've wanted to um, interview for a long time. Very dark music. You're going to feel like a slasher. You're in the middle of a slasher flick, and it's very awesome. It's this metal synth wave producer. This is James from Ghost. How you doing today? Good, man. How are you? I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right. Yeah, this is like, it's really cool to talk with you because I've been just really digging the stuff that you've been doing for years. Like, just out, like out of the blue, there was this, you know, just a wave of like a handful of artists that were doing this more heavier, darker sort of synth wave type of thing. And it was like super fun because it was like going back and forth between a lot of different things. And like, I would see you guys like, a part of like metal shows and everything. Like I actually, I saw yeah. you um, opening for uh, King eight one zero and um, out in Michigan. Oh, yeah. yeah. A couple years yeah. back. So that was super fun. And I was like, and like, I'm like, yo, this is super cool. So like um, this past uh, fall, you, uh, you know, had a new album coming out. It's a valediction sort of, what did you want to accomplish on this album in comparison to the stuff that you did before? Um, I mean, I don't really, I didn't really set out to accomplish anything. It's just, uh, as I was writing, I just, you know, I, I, I did want to do more vocals, um, because I did a few on the, on Possessor and people seemed to like it for the most part. And so it just kind of gave me a little more freedom just to create in a different way. And, um, I don't know. Vocals are fun. Uh, I really enjoy like expressing my, my myself vocally. Sounds lame, but it's true. <laughs> <laughs> when when am I like uh, going back to some of your earlier work? One of my favorite uh, joints was on the the Behemoth album. It was the the track uh, "Without a Trace." Um, mm, yeah. I still love like listening to that. You know, it always, it always just pops in my head. You know, and that was you know somebody that you had some uh, featured vocalists on there, uh, Haley Stewart. You know, and mm, yeah. like that, like that song is a, like a lot different than like the stuff that you do now. Um, you sure, know, yeah. like kind of talk about that track and like that sort of sound that you've had in the past. What about it? I'm sorry, dude. 
Um, like, kind of talk about you know the variety, of, your sort of variety that you've had. Like a uh, track like that was a little bit more dancier and a little bit more light than yeah, the stuff yeah. that you're doing now. Well, I, I, uh, I just changed my art. Basically, it's very personal for me, so I just change my art changes with me. So anything that I go through or anything I'm listening to is going to affect me, and it's going to you know leak into that. So. Just as I grow and change as a person, the project will as well. You know, it may not seem like growth for some people, but that's just why it will and always change. You know, it, if you look at it over just all at once, it looks drastic. But to me, if you, you know, take in the scope of how long it took to get where I am, it was a natural progression, just getting darker and heavier. And so, yeah, that's why the change. Uh, but I just, I don't want, I, I don't, I, don't really like doing the same thing twice. It feels um, feels phony to me. So that's why it's changed so much, and it will probably always change as long as I do it. You know what? What was it about your sort of, you know, what sort of personal reasons did you go from like, you know, having maybe that sound before where it was a little bit lighter, but now it's like really dark at this point. You know, was it just just personal tastes? Yeah, yeah, for sure, man. I mean, I, I put a lot of just what I personally enjoy into my into my music. I mean, that's just how my brain works. And so, yeah, it's just uh, you know, it's been it's been quite a while since I started the project. So, you know, to keep something sounding one way, I, it, it's impossible for me. It would drive me crazy. You know, but I answered. Oh, I don't know if I answered the question or not. <laughs> no, it's all good. It's all good. When, you know, what was sort of what, what were you sort of going through like earlier earlier on in your uh, musical career when you were sort of thinking up where you wanted to go sound wise? You know, was it just were you just taking what what you naturally wanted to do in here and just making that? Yeah, definitely. That's all it is. And yeah, a lot of. Uh, and a lot about the ghost sort of mystique is that you don't, we don't see your face out there. You see, you know, skulls, you see this sort of these characters, you see this really, these really cool, like visuals, you know, what was your idea about that part of the whole package? Uh, I just really, um, like, uh, bands like Kiss when I was little and, I like Daft Punk and Danger as far as like electronic music goes, Bloody Beat Roots and that. Yeah. I think the mask really just adds something to that type of electronic music, especially because, you know, it's just, you know, it's just people standing on a stage. There's not much going on in electronic, a lot of electronic music. So right. I think it just adds to the whole thing, just, just a little more entertaining and fun to play with. Yeah, the thing is with that, there's a lot of DJs that are like, if you're looking at a, if you're looking at an uh, electronic DJ while it's DJing, you're doing something wrong. You're supposed to be dancing, but most people right, don't. Yeah. Uh, most people don't adhere to that. So you might as well, you know, have some sort of a theatric on stage. Sure. Yeah. Where do you set? Where do you sort of come up with uh, the ideas in regards to your album covers, or you know, just the visuals in general? Um, it really depends. They've all been kind of different. Like, um, let me think. So, Behemoth, uh, the label I was on at the time introduced me to the, those artists, uh, four of them who Carpenter Brood also works with them. Yeah. And so that's kind of how that came together. I had the idea of wanting it to look like the thing, the cover of John Carpenter's The Thing, sort of. And then, uh, with non paired DC, it was just based around the whole concept of, uh, you know, uh, Milton's poem, uh, Paradise Lost. So that was easy. We used artwork that was inspired on that and just kind of manipulated it. Um, but with Possessor, that was like all my idea, personally. Like, I did the photo shoot, I set it all up. And with the new album, it's just a lot darker and staunch. So I, I wanted to work with, you know, somebody that works with, like, black metal musicians. And that, uh, his name is Din Sora. He does. He does work for a ton of black metal bands. Like from the time that I saw you open for a King Eight One Zero, you know, has there is there anything different in regards to your uh, your stage show? 
Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. I've got a bass player that works with me now, and um, uh, you know, like all the vocals. There's so many more vocals, and uh, yeah, I mean, the whole stage shows completely different. We have like a portrait standing projector in the middle, and we're surrounded by uh, uh, LED lights. So yeah, it's a lot different. Oh, nice, nice, nice. When, when sort of you know bringing your outside influences into your project, whether it was you know, musical artists or slasher flicks and anything like who are some of your favorites, you know, uh, just, that's just like, say like, uh, like slasher flicks, you know, what are some of your favorite movies? Definitely the easy ones. I mean, Halloween, uh, Nightmare on Elm Street. Um, I don't know. I also liked all the sci-fi from the eighties, like Terminator and uh, yeah. all that kind of stuff. So, uh, but I mean, I always go back to Goonies. I love that fucking movie. Um, <laughs> yeah, I love it. Right. And um, yeah, I mean, those are. I mean, I, I like slasher films. But there's, I think, there's a lot of bad ones. So bad, a lot of bad franchises, even. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I love those movies. Those films are, and they're all synthesized with heavy sound effects. So you know, I've always enjoyed that that noise. Yeah. What kind of a kid were you growing up? When did you first sort of get, like, that musical bug? Mm, I don't remember. I just always I always remember. My mom, like, listened to a lot of heavier, like, rock and roll and stuff. So I always remember liking music. I don't remember not loving it. So it was just, I guess, I would actually decide to play it no matter what because I was just always super enthralled by music. Uh, I don't remember a time or a favorite my first favorite or anything like that, you know. You've uh, you've performed with, you've toured with a lot of different types of bands, a lot of heavy artists. You know, has any of those bands, you know, influenced how you do your music or your stage show? Um, maybe like um, not necessarily how I do it, but definitely to to be more professional uh, at certain things for sure. Some of the bands we toured with, the just the way they run things is crazy. It's like a, you know, it's not like being in a fun band. It's it's fucking a lot of work. So we learn a lot from from touring with bigger bands for sure in that regard. I mean, I, I don't really get influence as far as like any kind of vibe I'm gonna try to go with. But yeah, the behind the scenes and everything and how much goes into their production definitely influences me. And just and just musically. Is there anything that still influences you, or is it just something that comes out of you? Uh, yeah, I mean, totally. There's uh, anything that I'm into at the time could possibly, like, I'll take a little sliver of it or something, you know, to to use just to keep in my mind that that's something I want to kind of play around with, some sort of sound, some sort of, but, you know, like, I really like Boy Harsher and Trust and all those modern, like, goth bands that are coming out, so... You know, there's definitely some some influence in, of them in my music, and uh, even like with Tane, as far as metal goes, yeah. I love a lot of their their stuff. So yeah, I saw Latane yeah. live recently, and their 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 live show is amazing. Yeah, it's insane. They have all that all the candles and shit everywhere. <laughs> yeah, it made it made the it made the venue smell so good. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah I've heard. I've heard. <laughs> <laughs> but um with with your you know your music having this sort of you know black metal slasher influence you know do you feel like you know that like your music could be something that could be you know played in a movie yeah i think it's possible there's there's definitely still some some possibilities there it's been in there was a song in one movie. Uh, it was like a smaller horror film. It was like Bloodfest, I think it was called. Okay. And there's like a, a part that, I mean, it was on like Netflix and everything. It didn't go to like a big theater release. But anyway, I can't remember what song it was. I think it was something from Behemoth. And it, went, it, it looked all right. I mean, it's kind of weird to watch, to, I guess, hear your music in a movie. <laughs> I, I don't know if I would have used that song in that scene. But yeah, yeah, I think there's a potential there. Is, is that something you would love to do, is just, like, maybe score a movie? Yeah, dude. I've thought about it. Uh, 
I tried. Uh, there was a film that approached me and let me do like a couple of test scenes, but they only gave me like 48 hours to do it. So uh, I didn't get the whole score. But uh, yeah, I would totally like to do that. I mean, it would be a lot easier than touring. You know, just sit at home and write music. That would be amazing. Right. When I'm, you know, I'm when I'm reading information about the the newest album, um, you know, I, I'm seeing that you have this sort of character that uh, that's in the story. Um, how you know? How do you say that, Balbreath? Yeah, that's how I say it. What's What's the story behind that? Uh, well, I just wanted to in the beginning. The, you know, it was much more of a character than it is now. Um, so uh, I, yeah, I just wanted to give it a name that was separate from the project. And uh, just that demon in particular is kind of like a chill demon. He's not like a real asshole or anything. He, like, <laughs> can't, he can't lie and he like makes things into gold. So he's pretty chill. <laughs> nice. You know, would you, you know, would you like to have like other things sort of attached to your music at all, whether it's like, you know, comic books or any sort of art, you know, artistic things? Yeah, I almost did something with a comic book dude once a few years ago. I don't remember why it didn't pan out. There's so many things that people I think are, you know, they're extremely ambitious with at first, but it takes a a lot of work to see something through to the end. So a lot of people just kind of give up. Kind of sucks, but whatever. Right. You know, but when, yeah, I would totally, I'd be down with that. I, don't, I mean, I used to, when I was younger, I mean, uh, obviously I just loved fucking comic books. Ghost Rider was one of my favorites. Okay. Uh, so, yeah. You know, um, what is like, um, when you come, well, I was, I forgot what I was about to say, but anyways, um, <laughs> <laughs> um, what what uh, what were some other comic books that you liked, anyways? Uh, let me think. I mean, it's been a lot. I really just like. I was obsessed with Ghost Rider. Okay. And the old the old Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle comics were cool. The black and white ones. Um. Oh, and I loved a, a comic book called Melting Pot. Okay. Uh, uh, it was uh the artist for that? His name was like Simon Bisley, and his art is fucking crazy good. It's just like really really detailed and like it's all oil paintings is what he does so it's just pretty intense to think that he does comic books in oil but yeah some that i remember liking yeah when it comes to sort of like this sort of synth wave umbrella that you kind of you kind of get put under why you know why do you feel like how do you sort of stand out amongst everything else that's out there uh well i mean that's part of the progression it's important to keep progressing or you know it just become part of everything that's stale and so that's why i go through all this metamorphosis is to distance myself from uh, any particular pigeonholing you know what i mean I, I don't think it's important to put people into specific genres other than for like maybe the purpose of sales or something you know yeah. what i mean or explaining what kind of a concert you're going to yeah, but uh, you know, eventually no one will care what synthwave was. So <laughs> I think I'm just you know I'm just trying to do my own thing, go my own way. And so you know that's that's just part of how I naturally progress. It's not like uh, I saw like I hate synthwave or anything, and I just just want to get away from it. I just you know I think every artist kind of does that when it's when you get started out in like a group of like one type of genre, you know, everybody's calling a bunch of people to certain things. Yeah. Uh, I think the ones that survive are the ones that change. And, you know, a lot of times I don't even enjoy the, a lot of my favorite bands change, but I can't, you know, I can't hate on them for it. I get it. Right. Right. How, you know, when you're working on a project, how much music do you actually make in comparison to what makes it on the album? I'd say like 90, 95% of what I, right makes it onto the album every now and then i'll throw something out it's just very rare because i usually just i don't move on in the track i don't like you know what i mean before i move on so oh yeah so like by the time i get through the middle of the song i'm not going to give up on it until i have you know it's sounding the way i want so that's why most of what i sit down the right makes it on the on the records do you do you usually have an idea of what you want to do with a track 
or do you just start jamming or whatever and something comes about? I may start out with like a general vibe that I want to go through, go for, you know, like a heavier black metal vibe or something I'll have in my head. But, um, you know, that could change while I'm writing the song. It's pretty uh, organic, for lack of a better term. It's just, even though it's on like electronic equipment, it's still like, I change things throughout, you know, like I may go back to a song that I think is finished like three weeks later and add something to it. Which but you're... yeah, I don't really ever, I don't really ever have any like specific, right. like I don't like hum a, a melody in my head and like record it on my phone or anything like that. <laughs> right. What's your, what's your general like gear setup? You know, how many instruments do you have or keyboards or whatever? What's, what's, what's your usual? I don't really have much, dude. I'm, I produce mostly all inside the box, so I don't have a lot of hardware. Okay. I use I use a few MIDI controllers. Like I just got the Akai Fire that's created for the first controller for FL Studio, and I wanted to get it to try and work with something different on the new record. And um, uh, mainly just uh, yeah, I just do everything on the computer for the most part until I start deciding to do it live. Like uh, I think I'm gonna get to play around with that the Novation's new giant synthesizer. I can't think of the name right now, but it's like the full version of their peak synthesizer. So I'll have that for a little while, hopefully, and we'll see how that goes. But yeah, man, I mean, I, I do most of the writing on the computer. Do you, uh, but I, I, I have played like guitar and drums okay. and I have a piano in my house and things like that, but you know, right. it's electronic music. I don't need all that shit. <laughs> <laughs> do you ever think about when you're writing the music how you're going to perform it um no i probably should sometimes because certain things don't work that well live but uh <laughs> no i when i'm writing it's it's all just about that i don't even i can't really think about anything else or i'll get distracted right right but when it comes time to sort of think about your your live show is there anything that you have to maybe like retweak for the live performance? For sure, yeah. I mean, a lot of what I do, like synthesis wise, is uh, you know, like I'll add things a lot because you know some of these songs I wrote, uh, some of these songs I wrote, you know, years ago on different computers. So I have like the, the skeletons of everything, but I don't. It's it, to to uh, to go back through a track and like remove certain certain parts and things on some of the older ones would be next to impossible. I'd have to download all the VSTs that I used to use that I don't <laughs> have anymore. It would just be a real pain in the ass. So a lot right. of what I do live is just, just adding synthesis and, you know, we add the, the bass sound over everything now and of course vocals. Right. You know, aside from, you know, me in whether it's now or in the past, you know, working with vocalists or whatnot. Are you, um, do you ever have any plans of, you know, just collaborating with other musicians or artists? Uh, no, not really. Uh, I used to when I, you know, wanted to do vocals, but now that I'm doing that mostly myself, I don't, I don't really, I don't know. Collabing is kind of a pain in the ass, to be honest. For me, I don't really like it that. <laughs> it just, it's never really, uh, I don't, I don't know. I don't have fun with it for some reason. Um, and I guess it might be different if, you know, we were in the same room working on something together, but sending things back and forth just seems like a waste of time to me. And uh, I have the, the few times I've done it, I didn't like it at all. So yeah, probably, I'd, I'd have to like collab with somebody like in a studio. That would be cool. Yeah. Like the back and forth through email or whatever can be a little bit uh, impersonal, I guess. Yeah, for sure. Don't get the don't get the vibe that you're looking for. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's impossible. Yeah. What um, you know, uh, now that you uh, you've had this album out for a few months, um, you know, what's the what's the future have in store for you? You know, what, you know, anything that you can talk about? Um, well, I mean, we have uh, Europe. The Europe tour starts just like five days after this U.S. run, and then we have a few festivals. Can't think of all of them right now. Yeah, but um, uh, I'm starting to write the next record already, so I'll be doing a lot of that this year. And then we're trying to do 
maybe one more support run for the end of the year, but nothing's concrete yet. Do you do you do a a lot of the writing for your music while on the road also? Mm, I've probably written like four songs totally on the road ever because it's it's not a very yeah it's not a very good place to like sit down. I, I can never in the right headspace on tour. I'm always uncomfortable and tired and you know missing my my house and everything. So it's just difficult to get into that 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 frame of mind. So you mostly just do all your uh, writing at your house. Yes, definitely. Nice, nice, nice. <laughs> well, it's been uh, good talking with you. Um, you know, like I said, I've been a fan for a long time. Uh, I'm so glad to finally be able to uh, to chat with you, and I and I loved uh, seeing you uh, at that King Eight One O show uh, when it was in uh, Michigan. But um, oh yeah, when um. Before we get out of here, where can people go online to get more information about uh, everything that you're up to and tour dates? You know, anything you want to plug? Um, every social media is slash uh, ghost 1980s. So it's uh, GOST 1980 S. So it's pretty easy to find me, or you can just Google it. Um, but yeah, I'm always posting about what's coming up. But it, it's amazing how many times people. We'll, we'll go to a city, and then like three days later, somebody will message me and be like, are you ever coming to my city? And I'm like, I was just there. Dude, so, yeah, I think, yeah. Yeah, I think I every know. band goes through that. You're like, dude, we were just there. Yeah, yeah, it sucks. <laughs> well, good luck with everything on tour, and uh, be safe in Europe. And- All right, man. Thanks, man. You too. Hey, yo, thank you for listening to this episode of Fresh is the Word, hosted and produced by myself, Kelly K. Fresh Frazier. Empowered by Anchor at anchor.fm slash fresh of the word. Intro theme music by Foulmouth, Shimmy Bango, and Knox Money. Fresh of the Word is available on all major streaming platforms. Please rate and review on Apple Podcasts and Stitcher. If you want to support Fresh of the Word, please consider pledging via Patreon at patreon.com slash fresh of the word. Follow Fresh of the Word on social media on Twitter at Fresh of the Pod, on Instagram at Fresh of the Word Podcast, and join the Facebook group at facebook.com slash groups slash Fresh the Word. For more information about Fresh of the Word and our other podcasts, Breaking Records and Renaissance Soul, and a collection of pop culture articles and reviews, please visit freshofthepodcast.com. Thank you for listening and your support. Goodbye and good night. Fresh is the word.